a sense of what the storylines might be in 15 years, please welcome Green Biz co-founder and chair, Joel McCower. You're watching Green Biz News for February 14th, 2038. Now here's Joel McCower. Good afternoon. Our top story, protests are mounting against Elon Musk's plan to mine Mars for neodymium and cerium, what were once referred to as rare earths, but are now called space elements. The entrepreneur whose electric vehicle company Tesla was sold to Microsoft in 2025 after plummeting sales, emigrated to the Red Planet last year to leave the first human colony there. The first ever interplanetary protests have centered around Musk's plan to hire children living in the space colony as minors, apparently to circumvent child labor laws here on Earth. Moreover, say protesters, the energy and emissions used to power the mining operations risks raising the Martian climate by several degrees while causing more severe dust storms, known to astro-meteorologists as black blizzards. Addressing the protests, United Nations Secretary of Climate Activism Greta Thunberg said, We've seen this movie before and it doesn't end well. The Mars mining operations also have raised red flags by regulators around the world, who are looking into violations of the Scope 5 reporting requirements enacted two years ago for extraterrestrial supply chains. Back on terra firma, emissions of greenhouse gases by U.S. corporations have reached their lowest level in more than 70 years. This, according to U.S. Climate Secretary Gia Bastida, in a joint appearance at the White House today with Vice President Malia Obama and Catherine Mazulan, who heads the government's Business Resilience Administration. Much of the credit goes to aggressive lobbying by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, whose support for the Decarbonization Act of 2030 was key in helping bring fossil fuel consumption to a 95-year low. In Madison, Wisconsin, protests entered their third week as students pressed college administrators to approve a small-scale nuclear power plant on campus. For more, let's turn to correspondent Sarah Golden, who's on the scene. Thanks, Joel. The students, who call themselves the Atomic Alliance, are demanding a nuclear facility to provide a reliable, safe, and emissions-free source of energy to power the university's growing electricity demands, including holographic classrooms and VR varsity sports. The Alliance says the university staff is stuck in an old-school mindset that must change for a low-carbon future. The administration needs to understand that nuclear is key for our climate future. We need nukes now. Nukes now! Nukes now! Nukes now! Nukes now! The Atomic Alliance is accusing the university administration of dragging its feet and greenlighting the reactor, which received regulatory approval in a record seven months as part of the federal government's new streamlined process for carbon-free energy. Back to you, Joel. Thanks, Sarah. The reverberations continue from last year's COP42 climate summit, where a powerful group of U.S. companies had proposed conference credits, an innovative solution for future meetings. Backed by a new methodology from Vera, companies, including the newly formed P&G Unilever division of Amazon, had pressed negotiators to allow carbon credits in exchange for not attending future COP summits. In a fiery speech yesterday, Amazon CEO Kara Hurst insisted that not attending those meetings could go a long way toward helping companies achieve their net zero goals. And finally, Michelin has just awarded one of its coveted stars to the world's first 3D printed restaurant meals. Called Strata, the upscale Scottsdale, Arizona establishment offers a five course meal printed on site, primarily from mycelium, algae, and kudzu. The process requires only 4% of the water used to produce a conventional meal, which has allowed Strata to meet the ambitious targets set by Arizona Governor Colin Tetreault to rehydrate the parched Grand Canyon state. That's the latest. Join us tomorrow where we'll look into America's plastic shortage and why Big Cotton could be left holding the bag. And for more news 24-7, subscribe to the Green Biz Hologram Report, a team of journalists reporting right from your desk. And remember, Always buckle up your heat shields before going outside. For Green Biz News, I'm Joel McCower. Can we just celebrate for a second how fabulous I look in 15 years? <laughs> I mean, it's if, as if I haven't aged a day. 
Uh, thanks to the terrific team who put that together, our amazing uh, creative director, Julia Van, our, our gra motion graphics uh, leader, uh, Robert uh, Wan, uh, Avery Hudson, who's over there on camera, our go-to videographer, and Alex Johnson from the Disruption Society, who sprinkled so much pixie ducks, dust and futuristic effects on this that it was really a, a terrific pleasure to work with. So thanks to all of them. And to the mighty Green Biz players, our a cast of, well, three, uh, Sarah Golden, our energy reporter, Amelia Marinay, uh, Marinay the, uh, our student activist, and the dulcet voice, voice over tones of uh, Grant Harrison. So a, a, a terrific team. It was really interesting experience making this. Uh, fun, of course, but interesting in terms of how do you tell a story about the future? How do you tell a story? What kind of story do, do we want to tell about that future? Is it, is it fanciful? Is it farcical? Is it fearful? How exciting, how terrifying does this story want to be? Something I'd encourage you all to do, you don't have to make a video or even anything, except just to think about uh, a point in time, five years, 10 years, maybe meet in the middle at 2030, and, and think about the story of what will the world look like? What will your world look like? What will your customers look like, your markets, your job look like? It really comes down to a, a question I've been asking companies and, and audiences for a long, long time. I'll pose it now, which is, what's the story we get to tell if we get things right? You know, it's what's that story that we get to tell if we get things right? Um, you know, it's, it's really important that we have that vision because if all this amazing work that we're doing, uh, it's, it's, it's about understanding the world that we're, that we're looking at, uh, that we'll be playing into. Um, I'll bet most of you don't have an answer to that question. Uh, and that's a lost opportunity. Uh, if we don't know where we're going, as the saying goes, then, then you know, any road will take us there. Or as another saying goes, we may just be rearranging the deck chairs. And when I say story, it's not we've, uh, we're re reducing our, our emissions 27% and by 2030 against the 2020 baseline normalized to revenue. That's not a story, that's a data point. There are hundreds of thousands of data points in this room alone that your companies have. That's not a story, we're talking about a vision for the future and how you and your company plan to show up in that future. It's, it's just, it's a really interesting uh, thing to do. And you know, sure, you're addressing your water, energy, carbon, toxics, materials, throughputs, but to what end? To continue doing business the way you've always done it? Well, that's assuming that the world is gonna look pretty much the same in five or seven or 10 years, and that your markets, your customers, your job, your departments, are all gonna be pretty much the same. How many markets are like that? How many can look back and see you know, how much have things have changed in five years, let alone seven or 10? So in this moment, when we have these, these headwinds of political, geopolitical, economic forces challenging the incredible tailwinds of a climate, biodiversity, and, and social justice crisis that we have in the world, understanding where we're going and how we're gonna get there is, is a really critical component. Um, so what's the story you get to tell if you get things right? That's a part of why we come together here in Scottsdale every year. Sure, to, to learn new techniques and trends and tools and best practices, and yes, absolutely to meet people, be part of this amazing community, uh, make new friends, see old ones. But also I'm hoping to reflect a little bit, to step back from the day to day and, and think about where you're going, what's the trajectory you're on, what's the journey, where's it gonna take you? And is it the, the journey that, of, of that, that you wanna be and where you're going? Um, so again, what's the story that you want to tell? And how do you get from today's story to that story? And how do you calibrate that con continually that this story is in that sweet spot between too much too soon and too little too late? 
So there's lots of different kinds of stories. We had a great comm summit of the last uh, day and a half uh, talking all about the different kinds of stories, the hero's journey, you know, David versus Goliath, all those kinds of things. Um, and a lot of these stories are about the visions of, of what's going on now and what you can promote and all of that. But there's bigger visions here. My friend Kara Pike, who was in the part of the comm summit, said, we need more stories of love. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Um, we need more stories where, there's, where we hear about the humanity uh, the, the, of, of companies, where it's about a hope and a positive future. We need to in incorporate love into our messaging, into everything that we do. So this is our story to write, individually and collectively. Uh, another friend, Patrick Flynn, who's here, uh, says, we will be judged by the future the ultimate performance review. We will be judged, and not forget the, I mean, the, the, our kids and grandkids and, and, and on and on, but what about the, our immediate future, the next few years, ourselves, our, our families, our bodies, our health, our well-being, uh, our communities. We will be judged by that future. So I want to thank you all for being a part of, of that as we write this story together and to be part of this amazing community that has the, the, the intelligence, the humanity, and the wherewithal to, to create this story. I have no doubt that collectively and individually that we can create a story that's both irresistible and attainable. And I look forward to working with all of you to creating and then actualizing the story that we will all be proud to tell. And with that, my friends, welcome to Green Biz 23.